Today, Jen and I are in the first gen Tacoma, taking it out to go do a little bit of camping. It's been far too long since either of us have been on a camping trip and far even longer it's been since both of us have been on a camping trip together. So today I found a cool spot. It's kind of at like a bluff top. So I'm hoping it's got a good view, although it's a little bit overcast and rainy. We'll see how it plays out. Got the Tacoma all parked up. We just had to put a couple wooden blocks on the two rear tires to get it a little more level. I've got the solar out right now, just recharging because, well, I'll go over this later, but we're really putting it to its test today. So grabbing as much sunlight as possible. We've got a little fire pit and you probably can't see it, but we've got a nice little lake view just beyond the tree line. So I had this idea to put up an awning, mainly because it was downpouring when we left, it's now much sunnier. But I was thinking, how am I gonna make a jerry rig awning with a tarp and no roof rack to tie it off to? I've got these old, really janky Amazon camera stand, uh, camera light stands that I'm gonna be using to hopefully hold this part of the canopy or the awning. And then I'm gonna use weights on the top of the roof to hold the tarp. And I've got these little alligator clamps that I'm gonna use to just clamp these off just like that. I wonder if this looks as janky as it feels. All right, and then may need to center it a bit better, but I think it's gonna work out. I'll just have to tie off these weights to the bottom. That's what I was missing. Here we've got the Joy Tutus dual zone refrigerator. This could be either dual zone fridge, dual zone freezer on both sides, and it powers directly through my solar. And I also have a second cable where I can plug it into an AC port while I'm driving. Here we've got your typical just wall cord, don't know the proper terminology, with the side that goes on the fridge. So we're gonna plug this in just right down here. Power on the inverter and get this plugged in. Now the UI or the menu system up here is really, really simple. So we can go ahead and power on the fridge and you see it comes on already. I have set to ice and this side is fridge. You have two compartments. One is gonna be smaller than the other labeled by S and L. So if you press and hold the plus and the minus sign at the same time, it'll actually turn right to this ice mode. And on this side, I have it set to 37 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just a good temperature for the fridge. If I wanted to make it a dual zone fridge, what I would do is press and hold these two. And now we've taken the freezer into fridge mode and we could then bring the temp all the way up to match the temperature on the other side. But in this case, I've got stuff in the freezer that I need to keep frozen. So we're gonna switch this back to ice. So if you come in here, I'll show you underneath the two lids, I'll show you the freezer side first, which has this nice, it's, it's plastic, but it, it's solid. It doesn't, it's a pretty nice little handle. So we lift that up and you've got plenty of room here in the freezer section. We've got ice cream, we've got green beans. And if any of you watch my channel for a while, you know I like to keep my coffee in the freezer. On this side, you have the larger section with a fridge. So inside, you can see I've only been able to fill this up halfway. I had a full six pack of beer. We've got eggs, we've got uh, sausage, butter, toppings, we've got cheese, a bread loaf, and we're still 
not even halfway full here. So, I mean, I, don't, I think you'd be hard pressed to fill this up unless you were going on a trip that's gonna last you maybe more than five, six days, upwards to a week. Right here, you've got an extendable handle, which has two levels and it locks into place. And then it's also got these wheels back here, which are pretty rugged. It's not a plastic wheel. It's actually a rubber wheel with a metal hub. I've drug it around the grass a bit and had no problems with that. This is just the first camp trip with the Joy Tuttis refrigerator. I'm really excited to put this thing to the test, even just overnight, see how it holds up, see how quickly it draws down my power system. I've got a pretty small and weak solar setup, so it's not really gonna do it justice, but I'm excited nonetheless to see how much power this thing draws in that max eco mode, holding it up overnight with the freezer and the fridge on. Joy Tuttis, thank you so much for sending this out. I'd be looking forward to giving you guys an honest update weeks, months, maybe a year after this thing has been owned and let you know how it's doing. For anybody new here, this is my 1998 Toyota Tacoma. It's a four wheel drive, five speed manual. It's uh, my favorite vehicle at the moment. Prelude in a close second only really because it's up on jack stands and I never get to drive it. But this is the adventure vehicle. This is the camping rig. It's seen quite a few different renditions. Holy f massive hole in the ground. It's seen quite a few modifications and renditions of the camper, but I'll give you a quick tour. And by the way, this is how my janky awning came out, but it works. You know, we had a little wind roll through and it, it didn't budge. So inside we have a wooden build out of, uh, you know, a little camper platform, bed platform. In here I have the whole kitchen system. It's about a four foot drawer that's maybe a foot deep and holds literally everything. Stove, pots, pans, coffee maker, a little bit of utensils and some seasonings and everything you need for a camping trip. Running the full length of the truck bed is this little hole here, which I basically use to put fishing rod, different little pieces of truck gear blocks that I use to level out the truck, which are currently under the rear tires because we're on a bit of a hill. On this side, I have my solar setup. So we've got a AGM deep cycle battery on this side. It's it's again, not really meant for camping. It's, it's almost like a starting battery. It doesn't have a whole lot of reserve capacity, but I got it really cheap and uh, it's gonna do the trick for now. And then on this side, I have my solar controller mounted running up to my 750 watt Synwave inverter. Then these cables run all the way out to the actual solar panel, which is only a 50 watt Renergy panel. If you guys are into DIY projects, uh, I have a whole video series on building out this wooden section of the camper. I also have a multi video series where I restored this camper shell. This thing was in rough shape when I got it. I ended up adding insulation to the inside as well as a carpet lining and then retinted the windows, paint matched the camper shell to the truck. So now it looks almost flawless. The company that painted it actually took a raw reading from the truck and measured the paint color with its age. So they didn't just use the paint code, they actually took a device, measured the paint color on the truck with you know the oxidation, sunlight, it fades over time. So what they did was match the camper shell paint directly to this aged first gen Tacoma paint. So this thing has been an absolute blast to camp out of. It really like takes a couple boxes off for me because I love camping, but I also love DIY projects and making things my own. So this has allowed me to really get creative with this space and basically create the ultimate camping vehicle for what I and Jenna need on our trips.
Slept pretty good last night. The uh, fridge, as I'm sure you're all anticipating to hear, did in fact turn off, but it wasn't its fault. We were getting really hot inside the camper last night, so we ended up throwing the fan on, on the same battery's power source, and that fan, I already know for a fact, depletes the battery overnight. So that coupled with the refrigerator, it was just bound to happen. Plus we got really cloudy coverage this morning, so we're not really regenerating any of that solar to go back into the fridge. But no worries, like I said, I have this cable here which is designed to run through the car's power system while you're running the car, obviously so it doesn't deplete your car battery. But if you're driving around, driving home like we are today, you can pop the fridge on that, get things back to proper temperature, and uh, pretty stoked with it. I do have a modification or maybe just a repair that I have to do when I get home, so stay tuned and uh, do a little DIY as soon as we get there. Back home from the camping trip and I gotta fix my door handle. This thing just keeps breaking. This is like the second time I've had to replace this one on this side. So I have yet again a new door handle for the interior. I'm gonna go ahead and throw on. It's super easy, but I figured I'd show you guys just in case I haven't, or if you missed it in the past. Here we go. Dorman part number right there for you. Pause the screen, take note. Let's get this installed. One screw right in the middle, Phillips head. Just gonna take that out. And then you just wanna take the handle and push it forward. And then it should come out like that along with our little broken piece. And once you've got it unhinged from these little hooks here, you're gonna pull this enough to release the cable. Right there is the little L cable that you need to release from the handle. So we can toss this broken piece away and we've got our new one ready to be installed. Leave a comment down below. How long do you think this one's gonna last? Days, weeks, months, years? Super easy job, took me all of two minutes and we've got a new working door handle thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode i hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of break from the car repairs and maintenance and doing a little bit of camping and uh we're back onto the repairs hopefully back on the prelude doing some more stuff on the tacoma but what else is new make sure you if you guys are new here hit that subscribe button i will see you in the next one keep elevating adios my friends cheers